Hey, welcome back. Today on the bench, I have a return of the uh, CD191 cassette deck. Um, I don't know if you remember this from the last video I did back in, uh, I think it was December. I did a video on repairing the mechanical assembly. We had a lot of problems. We had belt problems and then we had um, lubrication that gummed up and it was causing havoc in the in the tape transport. So we replaced all that, or not, we repaired all that. And um, and then after that, uh, I fixed that. I uh, ended the video. It was about an hour long already, so I didn't want to carry on. But there's still a lot of work to do to this thing. Um, I still want to go through and check all the subs, the systems, uh, you know, all the record functions and playback functions. Go in and check the power supply. I want to check ESR on some of the caps in there. Make sure everything's 100. percent And then we'll put it through its paces and uh, do a test record. And uh, we'll check the uh, the speed of the capstan motor, make sure that's bang on, and if not, we'll adjust it. So we still have a little work to do to this thing, so I just wanted to uh, pick up on this in the second part. So let's uh, dig into it, let's take the top off and, and start with this one. So one of the nice things about the CD191 is it has a removable bottom, and I have full access to the printed circuit board, and uh, we can test we can test all these capacitors, uh, make sure they're all 100%. Make sure you don't have any failed ones. These are some of the TK capacitors that uh, I'm not pleased to uh, see. And uh, you know, I can see a bit of circuit glue around some of the bigger ones. So I'll start cleaning that up and do some ESR tests, make sure all the caps and this borders are good and we're not gonna have any duds that are gonna upset any circuitry. All right, I had a little problem with this uh, cassette mechanism. It was, uh, put a cassette in and play it and it was shutting down it wouldn't rewind it wouldn't fast forward it was something like something was dragging or wasn't uh, engaging and I finally figured out what it was um, this little printed circuit board here uh, let's see here I'll get zoom in a little bit so you can see this uh, little printed circuit board has a read switch installed on top of it and that read switch is proximity to the circular magnet this is a magnet, Let's see it sticks. But um, as that magnet rotates, it, uh, in, it has little magnetic pulses that turns that read switch on and off, which creates a series of on and off pulses. So when I hit play, and um, if this wheel stops turning, the machine shuts down because it senses end of tape. That's what it's doing. Um, yeah, this board was actually rubbing on the uh, the wheel, and it was causing it to drag. And uh, as it made its rotations, it was getting hung up on that uh, on that board. So that's what was causing it to shut down. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I pulled the board back and reseated it. It's like it's glued in place. Like you can see how it's flopping around here, and it was down touching the wheel. So I'm just going to pull it back. And I'm going to hit it with some hot glue just to cement it in place. And uh, hopefully it won't drop down and cause any more problems. Just give it some hot glue here just to pin it. Pin it to that black post. And it's not pretty, but who cares. Now once that sets up, I should have uh, no problems with this going into shutdown anymore. Okay, I think the first thing I want to do is do a speed calibration and I do have a speed calibration tape here. It is uh, it's not a professionally made one. It's uh, 3000 Hertz tone and it's first 15 minutes and it was recorded on a Sony deck. Uh, I guess that deck is supposed to be a good one. And it's from fixyouraudio.com. This I got this off eBay. This is cheap and uh, you know, hey, it works, you know. You don't need to have a, a professional tape from a manufacturer. You can do this on your own. Now, I've put the tape in. Um, the adjustment for the motor speed is right here. On the back of the motor, there's a little piece of tape or sticker. And you can see there's a hole there, and it's just big enough for a flat, beat, uh, flat uh, screwdriver to put in there. 
So what I'll do is I'll start this up. Turn it on first. Start this up. And we'll get the tone going. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the camera on my frequency counter. And... Uh, We'll try and adjust this. Okay, so there's my frequency counter. And it's showing that we're going a little bit fast. So let's turn this down a bit. You have to be careful here because right beside the motor is the power switch. And uh, there's 120 volts there. And that turns it up. Turning it counterclockwise turns it up. Who would thought? Let's turn this down. Turn it up a little bit more. That's well under 1% right there, so we're good at 3,000. So we'll leave it at that. What I'll do is I'll let it play through and we'll see um, if the motor stay stable or if it drifts, okay? Okay, it seems I still have a, a problem with the drive mechanism on this cassette deck. I don't know if you can see it there through the... on the take-up reel. I'm trying to get some light in there so you can see it. See, I don't know if you can see it's fluttering and it's making a... kind of a fluttering noise. And uh, the tape is jumping around there on the right hand side. That is improper uh, take up reel tension. And uh, I can confirm that right now just by, with my finger, just touching the reel or the, the spindle. And it doesn't take much of a touch to stall that, stall that out. So that's not good. That's, that's still not working right. Something is slipping inside and I have a feeling there's a tire in there that's slipping so what I might have to do is disassemble this whole thing again and go after it because that's not good you're fluttering and it's making a lot of noise and you can also hear a little bit of flutter in the uh, tone as it's playing back which isn't good either because you're gonna hear it in the music so I guess take out drive mechanism one more time take off that plate and there's a, a tire in behind there. I'm going to see if I can just replace that tire and uh, put an end to this once and for all. All right, so I got the. I get to have the fun of disassembling the um, mechanism one more time, even though I thought I was done with it. But this tire here in behind the plate, remove the plate, and set it aside. This tire here is, is slipping. That's where I'm losing all my torque. And if I look at it, it looks a little glazed. I'm going to see if I can replace this um, tire. I'm just going to pull off this retainer. It's a little pin, plastic pin. It holds it in place and then it just comes right off. And you can see that. I think uh, this is the one I turn in the inside out or no? This, this is not the right tire for this. I did turn it inside out, I believe. Is this the right tire? I don't think so. Because it doesn't fit in the uh, in the pulley good enough. Looks oh yeah, it's got some oil on it too. So maybe I did get some oil on it and it's starting to uh, slip. But I want to replace this tire. Let me see if I can. I'll see if I have any more of the right size. Okay, so I managed to fit one of my stock tires. I have three different sizes. This one was too big. This one was too small. And I think this one here was just right. 
it's a little bit uh, wider than it needs to be but once it's stretched over the uh, the pulley it seemed to settle in and now it looks it's uh, it's looking pretty good I uh, most important thing is that we got a brand new rubber surface on here that's going to grip now and uh, so I'll reassemble this idler put this back on and we'll put the mechanism back together again and continue on with our tests so now I think it's time to move on to some adjustments here I got a few I think I need to make um, I did a test recording of tones starting at 1 kilohertz and then every time the tape counter jumped 10 um, points here I increased it to 2 kilohertz, 3 kilohertz, 4, all the way up to 25 kilohertz and it gave me a good indication of the um, input bandwidth of the um, the tape deck because my signal generator is going to put out an equal aptitude regardless of the frequency if it's if it's one one kilohertz or 25 kilohertz it's going to be the same amplitude but the meters on this shows a different story there was a sharp drop off at 16 kilohertz it started dropping off to pretty much uh, you know the minus 3 dB point and then from there it just felt like a stone but one thing I noticed is these two meters are not tracking equally so one thing I want to do first is I want to set the meters up so that they are accurate now how do I do that well it's hard to do you gotta set in uh, certain level tones and uh, I don't have the service manual the service manual has no help whatsoever on this with all the adjustments in here so what I'm going to do is I've got a one kilohertz tone I'm feeding it in and uh, you can see the right channel the indicator comes up first before the left I'll just keep increasing this until uh, 0 dB on the right meter and turn this down a little bit so we're going to have to hear that noise so keep going right there I got 0 dB on this meter, this meter still shows negative one. So what we're going to do is we're going to tweak the pots so that they show equal and they track equally. And we need to adjust the left. The board is marked. Uh, right channel, left channel. Okay, so I'll turn up the left channel. Now, these two uh, variable pots here, these trim pots, these are uh, 401 and 402. If you go into the schematic, the schematic is useless for the camera, sorry. Um, there's a line here in the Dolby section that comes off and it says meter out. And there's one here too that says meter out. And these two lines go to the meter section. And in the meter section there's two pots, one for each channel. V401, V402. So I'm going to tweak up the left channel a little bit just to bring this up to the same as the right channel and it seems like I'm already now yeah, let's let's tune it up a little better than that So they both come on equally, that's good, that's what we want. And they track equally all throughout the... Well, the left is still lagging. Now remember, I got the input to the meter between the left and right channel shorted together so they're both equal aptitude. And that's just to take care of the meter itself, just to get it set up. And it seems like the meter is okay now. On the low end, it's not quite as sensitive. On the high end, it's even more sensitive. Okay, let's take this jumper off. 
going to try it. Yeah, it's still lagging. Well, let's make it equal. There. They're tracking equally now. Okay, now I just want to play back the tape that I made earlier. It's just test tones at uh, 0 dBm. So let's have this start to play. And see what we get. I'm not getting a very good tone. I'll just let this play through and then I'll see how it performs on playback. So I'm playing back, I'm at 13 kilohertz now and it's staying relatively flat. The right channel is getting a little weaker on the, on the, on the higher frequencies. Let's see how it goes. 13 kilohertz, um, stayed pretty flat up until about 12 kilohertz. And uh, we're just going to switch over to 14 kilohertz right now. You can see it dropped quite a bit, down to minus 7 dBm's. Sounds like we're getting a harmonic. I turn up the volume. Wait for it to switch over to 15 kilohertz. kilohertz it pretty much fell off this was at minus 10 this was at minus 15 but that coincides with the uh, the input signal dropped off at around 16 kilohertz it dropped off like a stone I don't know if they have a bandpass filter on here or not it's gonna go up to this 16 kilohertz It's still pretty low. So I'll just watch this through to the end. And right at 19 kilohertz, the signal just disappeared. So pretty much that's the limit. So let's try uh, doing another recording in Dolby C this time. And we'll see how it stacks up with the Dolby B. All right, so on playback on my test tape, not the one I just created, the one I purchased, um, the 3000 hertz tone. I'm playing it and I'm getting equal aptitude on both channels, which is good. That's what I want. I want it to be playing back properly. So let's do this. This is the tape I created just now. And we got a little bit of a um, discrepancy between left and right channel. Left channel is a little bit lower. So that tells me that the record level is maybe needs a little bit tweaking on the left. Uh, I'm just going to listen to this tape, play it through, and um, see how it, uh, the frequency response for both channels, how it goes as I climb through the, 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 the range. So I'm playing back here at Dolby C, and I'm at it. <coughs> Sorry, at 15 kilohertz right now, just climbing. I'm just watching the meters as they uh, go through the different frequencies. Now you're probably wondering why am I going through all this problem of recording these test tapes and playing them back. I just want to see how the machine, um, how it behaves with the with the uh, different uh, frequencies, and I want to see how it's balanced between the two channels as it goes up through the frequencies. Um, if we have a one channel that's really poor, uh, um, let's say maybe it's out of alignment or maybe the head is worn, 
if I have one channel that's going to be poor, it's going to show up on this quite substantially. Like it, it's just going to drop off the face and you won't see it anymore, especially when you get up around eight or nine kilohertz. But it's right now we're at, uh, we just switched over to 17 kilohertz and we are still holding good. We are uh, minus three dBm from uh, the record level and it's still going up and uh, I'm just going to see how this hangs on. Um, it's pretty good considering this tape is like from the 1980s and it's an old uh, Fuji tape. Uh, but uh, it's it's doing okay. I think this, uh, it might need a little tweaking on the left channel here to bring this record level back up. Um, but I'm going to do that I think after I'm going to See, right now we're at 18 kilohertz, and we're starting to roll off. And uh, I think the next one, 19 kilohertz, is going to probably, probably put it in the dumpster. But uh, it's doing a lot better than Dolby B, that's for sure. Um, it seems like Dolby C has more background noise, but it has a better frequency response. So, okay, we just switched over to 19, the signal pretty much disappeared. And uh, that's pretty much the high end of this right now. So I'm going to stop that there. Um, yeah, so I'll do some more test tones. And we'll see if we can get these two channels balanced better on the record end of things. I think we got it good on the playback and in the metering. We just need to get the record dialed in and then we're, we're going to be all set. Okay, it seems like I have the record levels dialed in. Um, they're pretty much equal now, and I tried it at a few different frequencies. I think that was 7 kilohertz and 3 kilohertz. Both working good. I think that's the end of this one. I think I just need to uh, maybe clean the heads and then wrap it up and call her a day. So I think that wraps this one up. Um, cassette decks are fickle devices. Sometimes you get good ones, sometimes you don't, but uh, when you get a good one, try and hang on to it. How does this go back on? There we go. So for this uh, cassette deck we replaced three, no six, sorry, six capacitors um, because these blue ones here, let me get them out and show you, the blue ones had started leaking. Uh, on the bottom you can see there's some green crust on the bottom of these and um, they tested about half of their value. For example this one is a 10 microfarad at 16 volts I believe and it comes back at four or five microfarads. So I replaced uh, a few. I checked the rest of them and they were all okay. Um, everything seems okay that way. I just got a short snip of music here. It's royalty free so I'll play it. And this was recorded uh, just moments ago so it gives you an idea of uh, the sound quality. It's hard to tell when my bench speakers are garbage and I'm using a cheap Chinese realistic amp back there but it still works. So that's using uh, Dolby C and a chrome tape, chrome settings. Um, it's not as bright as I'd like to hear it be, but it, it sounded pretty good. So I think it's okay. Um, so that wraps this one up. Um, don't have much, have much more to add to it or do to it. So I'm just going to leave it here and uh, pass this on to a new owner. All right. Thanks for watching.